Hi guys, Matt from 123MyIT here. In this video, we will show you everything you need to know about the Lenovo IdeaPad 3. The Lenovo IdeaPad 3 was sitting at number one position on Amazon's best sellers list. Since then, it has dropped down to number six, but I wanted to know why this laptop was so popular. The IdeaPad 3 range is the budget level for Lenovo laptops. Below the IdeaPad 3, you will have the Flex series and above the IdeaPad 5 series. This is a 15.6 inch budget laptop and it comes with an Intel Core i3 11th gen processor which has an integrated Intel UHD graphics. Along with 8GB of RAM and 256GB of SSD storage. And the point of difference is it also has a touch screen. You could say that's a nice touch. Pricing for the IdeaPad 3 on Amazon is currently 390 USD, which from what I can see so far is an absolute steal. I will put a link in the description if you want to support the channel. The default screen only comes with a TN display at 220 nits of brightness, which is a bit dull in places, and the viewing angles go dark fast, but the payoff for this is that the battery life will last longer than if you had a brighter screen. In the box you will get the IdeaPad 3 itself, along with a 65 watt power adapter. Mine came with the US adapter, and the adapter does not allow you to remove the wall plug, which means if you're in another country, you will need a travel adapter. After testing the IdeaPad 3, I found it uses around 28 to 60 watts of power, and you can expect around 5 hours of battery life. Charging the battery will take just over an hour, depending on which charger you have. The IdeaPad 3 comes with a 15.6 inch HD TN multi-touch display with a resolution of 1366 by 768 and a brightness of 220 nits. The display is a bit dim, but it means that the battery will last longer. In terms of gaming, I was able to get games like Rocket League to play okay. However, Fortnite was just too choppy to play even on low settings. The term I would use was unplayable, so if you're looking for a laptop to game on, the IdeaPad is not the one. Along the top of the IdeaPad, you will find an integrated standard HD 720p webcam with dual microphone and indicator light. One of the cool things about the IdeaPad 3 is that you can close the camera off with a sliding button. On the right side, you have a 4-in-1 SD card reader which I find really handy for cameras, etc. Also, a Novo buttonhole for resetting the laptop if you have problems with it, and a 3.5mm headphone jack. On the left, you have a charging port, HDMI 1.4 port, one USB 2 port, and two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. The IdeaPad 3 comes with Dolby Audio dual speakers, and they are located on the front of the laptop, pointing slightly downwards. I couldn't tell where the speakers were until I opened the bottom. The speakers are okay, they're not as loud as they could be if they were facing upwards. The buttonless touchpad is nice and wide, but I do find myself right clicking a lot because I, to left click you need to press the bottom left side of the touchpad. For me it feels like the touchpad sits too far to the left and it also feels too clicky and plasticky, if that's a word. The keyboard is excellent, it's a delight to type on, however the keys do bend and wobble a little when you press them. There is also a little bit of flex in the plastics and it also doesn't come with any backlit keys, so that's just something to be aware of if, you're, if you like back, backlit keys. Another nice touch is that the keyboard is a full size keyboard, which means you get the number keys as well. Talking about wobble, the display does wobble a little bit, but it's not too bad, it's, it's definitely not a deal breaker. 
The overall build feels like budget quality, and it's made from almond colour plastic. If you want to know what almond colour looks like, here it is. The plastic flexes quite a lot, however it doesn't seem to leave fingerprints which is, which is really great. The display hinge folds all the way back to 180 degrees which is good design, and the hinge feels sturdy. Along the bottom of the laptop you can also upgrade the IdeaPad 3 by removing the screws from the bottom cover. The system supports an upgrade of the largest style SSD, probably to about 1TB. You can upgrade that along with the 1TB M.2 SSD if you wanted to. The RAM config is a bit weird. You have 4GB soldered and 4GB RAM in the upgrade slot, which makes it a total of 8. The way that's set up currently means that the RAM is in dual channel capable. If you upgrade the memory here to 8GB and 4GB, this would break that dual channel config and slow the laptop down. So I wouldn't recommend upgrading the memory. If this is not correct, tell me why in the comments below. The Wi-Fi card is already Wi-Fi 6, so you probably won't need to upgrade that for a while. Something else to be aware of is that the laptop comes with a cheaper version of Windows 11 Home operating system. I would recommend removing that and installing the full version of Windows 11 from the Microsoft website. I might do a video on how to do that a bit later, so why not hit that subscribe button. Let's run the Geekbench and see what scores it gets. Cool, so the IdeaPad 3 recorded a single core score of 1235, which almost beats the HP Elite laptops, and a multi-core score of 2783, which is to be expected because the Elite books both had i5 CPUs. If you check the GPU score, it's also not great at 9331. This is why the gaming performance was choppy in Fortnite. While running the benchmark, if we check the temperature that the laptop gets to, which is around about 36 degrees, you can see that the heat doesn't show up around the palm rests. This is good design, it means your palms won't get uncomfortable when typing. Also, it does put a lot of the heat out and up through the hinge, which is also good design. The IdeaPad 3 is a great 15 inch laptop for the price, and you can see why it's Amazon's number one selling laptop. At 390 USD, the IdeaPad does have a lot of great features such as Windows 11 laptop, touch screen display, and an SD card reader. However, if you are looking for a gaming laptop, then you should look for a laptop with a GeForce MX or a Radon RX GPU configured. Guys, don't forget to check out my other videos such as how to do a complete backup of an iPhone. And do me a favor, if you know anyone who might like this video, please share it with them, hit the subscribe button, and smash the bell icon. Dial into that chrome. That's not surprising given the sample's behavior. <laughs> I've never seen such accelerated cytokinesis. Whoa! Starting to think this may be a problem.